Hello, welcome to the Pilates Nomads. My name is Kira Regan, and today I am going to be taking you through a sequence that is really great for working on hip stability, strengthening the lower extremities. So we're going to be working on the ankles, strengthening the front and back of the leg, especially the hips, the glutes, and those outer hip muscles, the glute medius, that often get kind of sleepy and overlooked when we're doing sports like running or walking, hiking, cycling, those are all in that forward and backward plane of movement. So what we're focusing on today is getting out of that forward and backward plane of movement, getting some rotational curtsy lunges, some lateral lunges going from side to side, and just loosening up the lower body so that we can cross train for life. I view Pilates as cross training for life. So fill in the blank, whatever you like to do, whether it is dancing or hiking, running, swimming, playing with your kids, your grandkids, whatever that be, Pilates will help you to do those movement patterns more effectively with less pain and more confidence. So if that sounds good to you, we are going to get started. You see I have this lovely scarf, this TheraBand here. It is optional. We're actually only using it for one movement in this flow. So you can totally use just your body weight and a mat. All right. So make sure you've got some space around you. I like to start with just finding our center. So standing hip distance apart, finding that bony bone on the front of your pelvis, that's your ASIS, and then traveling down the length of the leg, that should be your hip width apart stance. And then I refer to a tripod, three points of contact on the foot. So your three points are across the ball of the foot, the big toe to the pinky, and then the heel. So you want to have that um, broad width spanning across the ball of your foot and then pressing through that evenly and your heel. Find that active arch, so you're feeling kind of that doming sensation in the arch of your foot, gripping lightly with your toes, but you're not like pulling too far into flexion. You're really just having a light grip of the toes on your mat, on the ground, and then roll the shoulders down and back. Stand nice and tall and just close your eyes for a moment. Soften the knees and find your balance here. If you're outside like I am, you might feel the wind trying to sway you side to side. But even if you're not outside, you'll start to notice what, I'm, what I refer to as a postural sway. So how your body just naturally moves around a little bit. It's not rigid, it's not going to stay in a fixed position. So we're going to work on that dynamic balance and stability. Take a big inhale through the nose, Pilates breathing in through the nose for four, Three, two, one. Hold your breath for four counts. And slowly exhale for eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. One more time. Inhale for four. Hold it for four. Exhale for eight. If your eyes were closed, then flutter your eyelids open and we're going to get started. So think about that tripod sensation as we do our flow today. That's going to help you connect to your balance a little bit better than if you weren't thinking about those three points of contact. So to begin, let's just take a big roll down. I will show you from a side angle. Float the arms up and overhead, grow two inches taller. And exhale, nod your chin toward your chest. Slowly start to roll down one vertebra at a time. One segment of your spine relaxes towards the ground. Try to get those fingertips to graze the mat. Softly bend the knees. Take an inhale. And on your exhale, tuck your tailbone and start to scoop the abdominals up towards the spine, making a shelf to restack your spine upon. Shoulders come back. Head comes back upright. Now we're going to do our tripod footwork. So, sorry, we're going to do our T rotations. I can't speak right now, apparently. So the left leg is going to stay stable. It's going to stay down on the ground. And that right leg is going to move forward and backward. So just join me when you're ready. It's as if that stabilizing left leg is a tether ball pull, and you are just swinging that ball forward, around, and backwards, making a capital letter T or a perpendicular sign, whatever works in your brain, whatever imagery you need to use. 
in Pilates is always going to be advantageous. I imagine tons of weird things, but you're taking that foot and you're moving it backwards and forwards. This is a gentle way to warm up our hips to get that internal rotation and external rotation by nature of moving the pelvis around a fixed leg. Three more on this side. Two. And one. Other side, plant your right foot, soft bend in that knee, and the left leg and foot are going to travel. You might feel a little bit more tightness in one direction, whether you're going forward or backwards. I feel a little more tightness every time I go into internal rotation of the hip. I'm out at the Auburn Fairgrounds, so hopefully it doesn't get too loud. I hear a plane going by, but I've got my microphone, so hopefully that helps. Not too noisy. Three more, making that T and back. Forward and back. You can make it a dance move. Bring this out next time you go dancing. I just did an extra one. All right, so next we're going into hip clocks. Back to the left leg being your stabilizing planted leg. Soft bend in that knee. We always want a very soft bend so we're not locking out at our knee joint. So this hip clock, we're going to go around the clock face, 12 all the way around to 9 o'clock, and then we're going to do the other side. So it's like a single leg squat. You're going to take this right leg, start in a passe or a balanced pose here, like a flamingo, and then you're going to do a little squat, tiny squat, and tap 12 o'clock back to your passe, and then reach out to one o'clock. Hopefully you know the face of a clock. And two o'clock. Inhale up, and then three. Exhale, reach back to four. And reach to five. Arms do whatever helps you to balance. Reach back to six, and inhale, and seven. Almost there, this is where it gets harder. And reach to eight o'clock. And now reach to nine o'clock. Woo! Other side. We're only going through this once. You can do this many times. That's the value of the pause button. So starting here on that right leg, soft bend in the knee. Start in that passe, tiny single leg squat. Reach for 12 o'clock. We're going counterclockwise now. So now you go to 11 o'clock. Inhale up. 10, and nine, reach for it, and lift. I want that reach and lift upright. So I have stopped saying the clock face hours, but hopefully you haven't gotten lost. We're back to six o'clock. Now we're reaching back to five, and four. Last one is the hardest one, that reach for three o'clock. Nice stretch right here, and passe, very nice. If you have time, you could do that for a total of three rounds, otherwise one short and sweet is good. So we're moving on to lateral lunges. Find a nice wide stance in hip external rotation. So that big femur bone is outwardly rotating in the hip socket. Your knee is in line with the space between your second and third toe, so you're not going to collapse your knees in like you've gotta go pee, okay? So hands are on the hips for now. We're just going to go into a gentle weight shift from side through center to side. Think about a smooth transition as you shift your weight through center to the other side. Keep pressing those legs back so they don't collapse inward. If you want an extra balance challenge, you can opt to close your eyes, but I know that that can be a little scary sometimes. So only if you feel safe and that you've got your balance in check today would I recommend you close your eyes? It can be really relaxing, but only close them for this one. When we add more variations, it will get a little too tricky having the eyes shut. Four more weight shifts. Find that breath. Inhaling through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. All right. And now we're moving on. We're gonna add a torso rotation, make a fist, cup it with the other hand. We do a weight shift and then exhale, twist. So it's an inhale weight shift and then exhale, come around. Inhale, shift, exhale, twist. This is a lateral lunge flow that I learned in a Tai Chi Qigong class a long time ago, but it stuck with me, I really love it. 
feels really nice outside with the breeze. I love these standing Pilates flows because you can take them out on a hike to the beach, wherever you're at or in your apartment. Low impact, won't make any noise. We'll do one more twist to each side. Inhale, exhale. Alrighty, moving on to so the next little flow here is we're going to add a heel lift and a side bend. So let's start, arms are just beside us. We're going to shift our weight, lift the heel, and then find your balance, big side bend, reach across your midline and then over to the side, and then you shift through center, lift your other heel, come into that side bend. Ooh, the calves are working. Come through center, slowly lift the heel, so it's a few different parts. So we do that lowering of the heel, shifting of the weight, lifting of the heel, and side bend, reach. And then you can make it a little more fluid once you feel like you've got that down. You can try to blur the edges. They don't have to be so sharp. We can take this movement and make it more fluid. It's a shift and a shift. You're a tree that is just blowing in the wind. Very nice. Ooh, almost lost it. One more to each side. All right, shake those hips out. So this next one is kind of similar. I really love this one. So we're going to go into a shift, side bend, shift, side bend. Note, there is no heel lift. Shift, rotate towards the leg that you're bending. Shift, and rotate towards the leg that you're bending. So we're gonna repeat that. It's a side bend to the leg that you're bending. Side bend other way. And a rotation, and a rotation. So just try to make this as fluid as you can. Going to that twist, and twist. Side bend, side bend. Keep breathing, twist. We'll do one more time through that flow. Reach, reach twist and twist. All right, that one feels so great. Wiggle out those hips. I love doing those combo moves where you get that upper body moving with the lower body. Also gets the obliques with all those rotations and side bends. So next we're gonna move on to a hip hinge. A hip hinge, I'll show you from the side real quick, same position though, is you're hinging the pelvis forward. You're hinging it forward like this. And then we're going to walk from side to side. I'm going to come back to face you. Just like to show those angles. So from here, maintaining that external rotation, keeping the foot down so you can get a nice stretch on the outer part of the ankle. We're just shifting our weight, crawling from side to side, staying low, keeping length from the crown of your head out to your tailbone, keeping that neutral spine. Hello, little buggy. Go, go. Shifting side to side. You can stay here or you can go into a Cossack squat. It's called a Cossack squat. It's a lateral lunge still, but you're allowing your weight to shift and then you lift your toes, go onto the heel. You can even do this without the hands. It's a little bit harder. I like to do a little counterbalance. I pull back and I reach forward, but you can also do this and not go as deep and still crawl your fingers from side to side if you feel like you've got too many tight spots on your hips. But eventually, you'll be able to go here and to the other side. This is also really good for ankle mobility on that standing leg. We'll do one more to each side, any variation you chose. Heel toe your feet back together. Not all the way, just a little bit closer. So our next one, we're doing just two more things. So many lateral lunges, I know kind of the theme. So this next one, you're going to shift, arms are in front of your shoulders, row, pull the elbows back, overhead press, I want you to even look up and then pull down. Shift, row, reach, look, pull down. <sighs> inhale, exhale, inhale, reach, exhale, down. Nice way to get the upper body integrated a little bit more. Warm up the shoulders, the rotator cuff, and to get that little bit of extension, inhale, exhale, little extension of the upper spine. One more to each side.
You can slow that down if you'd like. Go really slowly through it and then do a few at a quicker cadence. So our last one here with our lateral lunge is a snow angel. I'm gonna show you this one from behind, but we're gonna be working on external rotation of the shoulders to internal rotation and coordination with our lunge. So looks like this. In that lunge position, you shift to the side, hands sweep up behind the head, palms facing the back of your head. You shift to the other side, they reach actively out to the side, active reach, and then the back of the hands touch your lumbar. So it's a shift here and here. Really reach through your wingspan as you go to the side. Create space between your arms. We want to strengthen our rotator cuff and those shoulders within those ranges from external rotation here to internal rotation. We'll do one more to each side. Very nice. So moving on, that was all the lateral lunge stuff. We're gonna do some split squats and curtsy lunges next. So with the split squats, we're not gonna do many of these. You will have your band ready, but we're gonna start Facing forward where you have a little bit of space behind you to step back. Hip distance apart, find the tripod sensation in your feet. And then step back with the left ball of the foot. This is called our runner or a running in place. We're going to tap forward, tap back. Staying in that little hip hinge forward, keeping the length in your spine. Neck is in line with your spine. Tap forward and back. Exhale, inhale. Swinging those arms if that helps you. Or hands can stay on the hips. So you're trying to keep that hip hinge the whole time, really working the stabilizing right leg, especially in the glutes, and maybe you'll feel it in the quads. You can stay here or you can do an airborne version. Airborne just means you're hovering, so it's a little bit more of a balance challenge. Exhale, inhale, and reach. I want that lengthening, that oppositional reach from the toe all the way through that hip. So you're really lengthening this whole leg back. We'll do one more. Very nice, and let's shake that off and do that on the other side. So, runner position, find your tripod, nice upright posture, and then find that diagonal reach from the heel to the crown, finding length in your spine. Do those little runner arms, exhale, tap it in, inhale, tap it back. You're trying to stay very stable on that left leg so the knee is not wavering around right and left. It's staying, tracking over the space between the second and third toe. You can go into the airborne version. It's a little harder. Really think about pressing into the big toe. If you start to lose your balance, we often roll out to the side. So try to resist that by pressing a little more into your big toe. We'll do two more, reach back. And forward, shake that off. All right, what do we have next? So we're going to do our 90-90 split squat and then seaweed, seaweed spine and our TheraBand one. So the 90-90 split squat, we're only gonna do eight per side. Step back with one foot. So from here, left foot's back on the ball of the foot. You still have hip distance of space between your feet so you're not on a tight rope. Hands on the hips or wherever really. Inhale as you lunge down. You can gently tap the ground or go to a little hover above the ground. Exhale, straighten the legs to come up. When you do these, I want you to be very mindful of keeping the knee, tracking over the space between the second and third toe. Your knees are allowed to go past the toes. That's old, um, an old rule in fitness is you don't want the knees to go past the toes. But if you've got healthy knees, it's totally fine to let them go a little past the toes. We're only doing eight. I'm an approximator with counting because I'm talking so much. So I think we've got two more. 75% of your weight is in that front leg, 25 in the back. So it's mainly working that front leg. Last one. All right, another side. Can always do more than eight, but we're going slow and controlled. So I thought that was enough. Square the pelvis forward, upright posture. Find your tripod in that front foot. And then inhale down. Exhale, really press through that left foot to come up. Lunges are balance exercises too. Find that abdominal work. Keep that neutral spine. Two more, I think. You could always do more if I didn't count that properly. Very nice, and shake that off. 
So we have our TheraBand one and then what I call the seaweed spine next. So the TheraBand one, we're going to hold it at shoulder height in front of us. If you go wider with the hands, it will be a little bit easier, less resistance. If you go closer, it'll be a little more resistance. Also do this totally fine without a band. So let's step the left foot back, right foot stays forward. I'm going to rotate to the right towards that knee that is forward. As I go down in my lunge, I exhale. We're gonna do eight of these. Keep the left arm forward, strong wrist position, knuckles in line with the forearm bones. So here I go, exhale and twist. Inhale, upright, straighten through the legs. Exhale and twist, create that anchor with the left arm, staying forward, inhale back. You can make it harder by inching that hand closer to the other one. <sighs> Try to keep your lower body very stable, facing forward with the pelvis and knees. You're only letting that rotation happen in the upper body. So it takes a lot of control to resist letting the lower body rotate. Two more, exhale down, pull that band apart. Inhale up and forward. Last one, twist, Whew. and up. Go into the other side, step it back, press it down. Inhale up, pull away, and stand up on that inhale. You can tap down or just go to a little hover. Just be mindful that you don't slam the knee into the ground. And two more, I think. Ooh, step it up, toss the band aside, we're done with it. So this next one is a seaweed spine. I'll show you this way. So step one leg back, doesn't matter, we're doing both sides. I'm gonna step the right leg back. And then from here, we're going to make sure we have most of our weight again 75% in that front leg, soft bend in the back knee. We're gonna not go too low in this. It's gonna be more upright. Hands on the hips. So we're going to keep our lower body stable as the upper body does a seaweed kind of undulating motion in the spine. That movement, forward and backward for now, is going to try to throw off our balance. So we have to really think about that tripod sensation, as I almost fell over, in that left foot to prevent falling off balance. So I'm reaching forward, tucking my tailbone, rounding my back to go back, reaching forward, rounding back. Now I'm gonna go a little tiny teapot tilt from side to side. Like a teapot, you're tipping your tea out to the side and then the other side. And now we're gonna do a full circle. Remember again, most of the weight is in that left or whatever your forward leg is. Reverse your circle to each direction. Woo. Press into that big toe. And come on up, shake that out. Let's see how it feels on the other side. I'll show you from the forward angle this time. Hip distance apart, bring the other leg back. Come into your tall lunge, soft bend in your back knee. Hands on the hips. We undulate the spine forward and backwards. Lengthening forward, rounding to go back. Finding that extension forward and tucking the tailbone, rounding through the lower back, undulating your spine back. Let's go right away into side to side. Arms can really be wherever. You can have hands on the hips. They can be out to the side. You can play around with it to really get that dynamic balance challenge. Now we're gonna do circles. To each direction, keep it smaller, and then once you get better with your balance, you can make the circle a little crazier to try to throw your balance off. Ooh, remember, most of that weight is in that forward leg. And step it up, shake it off. Very nice. So, I'm going to go into some curtsy lunges. We're only gonna do a few. I'm gonna do another class that is really going to be focused on curtsy lunging, but right now we're just gonna do basic curtsy lunge introduction. So standing hip distance apart. Take your hands, just let them rest on your hips for now. Take that right leg and we're going to make a big semi-circle. You can drag that big toe on the ground. This semi-circle is going to go back and cross your belly button, cross your midline. Then you're going to go into a curtsy lunge. My toes are slightly facing on the diagonal, so they're not squared forwards, because my pelvis is not squared forwards. It's a little bit on a diagonal. So we're getting that rotational force in our lunge. 
Then we're gonna come up to center and do that on the other side. Draw your curtsy or your crescent. Go into that curtsy lunge, pass your midline, your belly button. Inhale down into that lunge and exhale up. So you don't have to trace that crescent every time, but I just wanted to show you how I think about getting into that curtsy lunge, making sure that belly button is not completely forward. I'm rotating my pelvis and with it, the belly button slightly to a diagonal angle. So one more intentionally slow curtsy lunge. Inhale down and exhale up. Now we'll go a little faster from side to side. Use that breath again. Inhale as you go down, exhale up. We can add arms, exhale, reach the arms up. Inhale down, making it a little more dynamic. One more to each side. Now we're gonna do some pulses. You're gonna go down here and pulse it. Six, five, stay low. Four, three, two, one, through center. Other side, six pulses. Five, four, three, two, and one, and up. Almost done. We're gonna end with some Pilates roll downs. So our little balance challenge today is to find a Pilates V. So I have about a fifth of space or a little bit wider between the balls of my feet. Heels are glued together. I'm gonna show you from the side. Find a nice upright posture. You can stay here or you can make it challenging a little more so by lifting your heels, keep them glued together, but lift them about an inch and a half above the ground. Inhale, float your arms up overhead. Maintain this height in your spine as you start to slowly tuck your chin toward your chest, round forward without collapsing. Go as slowly as you can. I know it's hard. Gets a little wibbly, Woo! like that, but try not to collapse down. Tap the fingertips to the ground. Big breath in. Don't let your heels change position. Exhale, find the abdominal scoop. Scooping all the way back upright. Sweep the arms up and lower the heels down. All right, so next we're gonna go into a wide V. So in, not super wide, external rotation, float the arms up a little easier. Exhale, slowly roll down. Softly bend the knees. Just let your body fully relax at the bottom, shaking your head, nodding it. Yes, rotating it no a few times. Try to simulate a yawn by opening your jaw and closing it one more time, open and close the jaw. Big breath in and exhale. Keep a soft bend in the knees and tuck your tailbone under. Restack your spine one segment at a time. And we'll do that in internal rotation. Knees and toes are slightly oriented towards each other. Inhale, float the arms up and overhead. Maintain that length as you slowly roll down, bringing those fingers to the ground. Inhale at the bottom and exhale. Soft bend in the knees, tuck your tail and roll back upright. Very nice. And then our last little challenge is we're gonna do a single leg roll down. So single leg, I'm gonna go on my right leg, soft bend in that right knee. Just let this leg hang out back here. It doesn't have to do anything fancy. And it's gonna be a little more balanced challenge, a little more obliques, your side abdominals. Rolling down, soft bend in that knee. Don't lock it out on the right side. Tap the fingertips to the ground. Big inhale to prepare and exhale to assist that roll up. Do you feel how the abs have to kick in a little bit more? Hopefully you do. And we'll switch sides. Float the arms back up, inhale. Exhale, dive up and over. Like your big imaginary barrel you're going over. Tap the fingertips to the earth. Big breath in through the nose and exhale. Can you roll up really slowly? Float the arms overhead and back down. And I always like to end with both feet down. So let's do feet together. Zipping through the big toes and inner thighs. Float the arms up overhead. Maybe a little extension. Push the hips forward. Reach up to the ceiling and exhale. Down you go. All the way to the ground. Softly bend the knees, inhale. 
This is your final roll down of today. Exhale and roll back up. Roll the shoulders down and back. Close your eyes. Bring your feet about hip distance apart again. And find that tripod sensation and that postural sway. Just see how your body wants to move a little bit. And honor that throughout the rest of the day into the rest of your week. Even if you take a very, very short break from your busy life just to do, you know, 30 minutes of movement or even two minutes of movement, you can pick and pull something from this class and integrate that into your day. And I can assure you that your body will feel so much better and your mind as well. All right, let's open our eyes. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will be back soon with some more content, some more short classes, short form classes that you can easily sprinkle into your day, into your week. Thank you so much and hope to see you soon.